I'm making this video in response to some excellent questions that people had. The first question is, uh, why didn't I plumb uh, the solar uh, furnace into the house directly? I'm renting this house, it's not mine. And uh, the second part of that is, with the advent of uh, new technologies, I believe that um, components should be modular, meaning that you can easily swap them out as the technology changes. Another very important question that someone had is they wanted some data on the temperature changes. It's about 11 a.m., so the sun has not hit the solar panel enough to start circulating air in the house into the modular solar furnace outside, and it's slightly warmer, 53 degrees on the exhaust. Another excellent question. Someone was concerned about the simplicity of the unit. Um, they believe that you can simply place rocks in the unit and the unit will get warm and then you can get the air into the house. Um, that's, that's a great idea. That would be a simpler design. The reason why I do have aluminum ducting is aluminum is an excellent conductor of, of heat and I've painted it black to absorb heat from the sun and then of course uh, air is directed against the surface of the aluminum, piping it to the house. To prove this theory, I'm going to get a temperature reading inside the box, and then I'm going to get a, a temperature reading on the exterior of the aluminum to see if there's a difference. So I'm showing the interior of the box is a balmy 53 degrees. And then if I get a temperature reading on the aluminum itself, it's 60 degrees. It's much warmer on the surface of the metal. 11.45 a.m. in the interior, the fan is starting to move. A little bit of sun is hitting it, and we'll get a temperature reading. The interior of the exhaust is about 79 degrees. Adjacent to the unit, where the air goes into the unit, 62 degrees. So it's about 12.15 in the afternoon. I'm going to go ahead and show that this infrared sensor is pretty accurate. Uh, it's about uh, the same as this little thermometer. The thermometer is set up to get a temperature reading in the kitchen and also there's a sensor underneath the house that's showing about how cold it is outside in the shade. So it's about 10 degrees warmer in the kitchen here and the electricity has been turned off so we're just running on solar energy right now. We're going to get a temperature reading next to the exhaust of the solar furnace is 64 and then the exhaust is, is reading about 85, 86 degrees. Is, is this uh, unit worth it financially? Uh, you think with this much heat energy being produced with a steady flow of, of the energy, it's really moving a, a decent velocity. It's, it's a lot like a hairdryer. Um, at four hours in a day in, in March when it's you know about 60 degrees outside and inside the house, it's certainly a, a quantifiable amount of heat. It's it's going to pay for itself within a year or two. But you know the real joy in this is is being a little bit independent from the power companies. We we certainly have an energy crisis, and if anything, the the cost of electricity is only going to go up. And I feel like I have a little peace of mind. I can turn off all the electricity in the house, and it's getting warmed up by this machine that's totally run on solar solar energy. So it certainly has benefits besides just the financial cost. All right, it's 12.45 in the afternoon. We're going to take another data reading. It's 65 degrees in the kitchen. Uh, still 52 degrees underneath the house. We're going to get a, a reading here of the exhaust. It's 106 degrees coming out of the exhaust. So it's 12.45 in the afternoon. We're going to get some temperature readings outside. It's about 60 Seven, 70 degrees on outside. It's about the same temperature in, in the house as is outside. And then when we get a reading off to the side, not on the ducting, but on, on the side of the interior of the solar furnace, it's 86 degrees. And then if we get a temperature reading on the aluminum, which is absorbing the solar radiation directly, it's slightly warmer, showing about 90 degrees. It's 
1 15 in the afternoon and the temperature of the kitchen is really stabilized it it's not increasing very much so I went ahead and made a little um, change to see if we can get some more airflow the the small intake that was venting from the kitchen out to the the solar furnace uh, wasn't adequate there were some uh, comments about that so I've decided to just put a vent on the bottom of the unit uh, to allow the air to flow a little more freely and already I mean the, the fan is certainly producing uh, more volume it's moving a little quicker so I've just uh, slightly opened up the window on the back side of the house and we'll get a temperature reading here and uh, it's about 105 degrees coming out of the furnace so we have more airflow and the temperature is uh, is still holding a much higher uh, reading than inside the house showing 76 next to the unit further away from the unit uh, a little colder it's getting we'll get a reading of the ceiling and it's starting to warm up a little bit for some of us that are really inquisitive we want to know how much flow is entering the house so we're going to measure that this is a 33 gallon garbage bag hooked up and we're going to see how quickly it fills up with air. The air is about full capacity right now, 120 degrees. And that bag was completely empty. And we'll see how long it takes to get totally full.